Welcome to Reality School. In this video, we'll go over how to delete a single or all AR objects from a scene. When completed, our app will allow the user to activate deletion mode using a long press gesture. When deletion mode is activated, there will be a cancel and confirm deletion button. Upon confirmation, the selected model is deleted from the scene. We'll also have a clear all button in scene mode which deletes all models from the scene. Before we get started, this is the hardware and software used in this video. If you are using anything older or newer, you might have to make some adjustments to your code. We have several action items for this video. First, we'll create a model deletion manager class with an entity selected for deletion published property. Second, we'll pass a model deletion manager state object into the app environment. Next, we'll add functionality to use a long press gesture recognizer to select a model for deletion. After that, we'll create a deletion view with cancel and confirm delete buttons. Next, we'll update the if statement in content view to render a placement view, a deletion view, and a control view based on specified conditions. And finally, we will add functionality to the clear all scene button. So without further ado, let's get started. For the first action item, we'll create a model deletion manager class with an entity selected for deletion published property. We'll start off by creating a new Swift file. Right-click on Scene Persistence Helper.Swift and select New File. We'll select the Swift file template and call it Model Deletion Manager. Remove Import Foundation and instead import Swift UI and Reality Kit. Create a new class called Model Deletion Manager and have it adopt the Observable Object Protocol. This class will have a published property. We'll call it Entity Selected for Deletion, set its type to Optional Model Entity, and assign it an initial value of nil. Before we proceed, let's discuss why we need this variable. Whenever the user selects a model for deletion, we want to assign it to this property. When the user confirms deletion, only then we remove the model entity and its corresponding anchor entity from the scene. Next, we'll use the will set property observer to keep track of how the value of this property changes. According to the Swift documentation, will set is called just before the value is stored. This will allow us to compare the new value and previous value of our entity selected for deletion property. Inside the will set property observer, we want to monitor for three distinct conditions. First, we want to know when a model entity was selected for deletion and no prior model entity was selected. Second, we want to know when a model entity was selected for deletion after a different model entity was selected but wasn't confirmed for deletion. And third, we want to know when the new value of entity selected for deletion is being set to nil, essentially clearing the selection. This will happen when model entity deletion is either cancelled or confirmed. Let's work on the first condition. We want to know when a model entity was selected for deletion and no prior model entity was selected. For this, we'll use an if statement to check if the current value of entity selected for deletion is nil and the new value is not nil. We'll safely unwrap the new value by assigning it to a constant called newly selected model entity. We'll add a print statement to log that this condition has been detected. In order to visually highlight the entity selected for deletion and distinguish it from other models in the scene, we'll create a model debug options component and use lighting diffuse channel for the visualization mode. When setting this component to the model debug options property of the newly selected model entity, our model entity will look like this. You can see that it clearly stands out from other models in the scene. This completes the first condition. For the second condition, we want to know when a model entity was selected for deletion after a different model entity was selected but wasn't confirmed for deletion. For this condition, we'll safely unwrap the current value of entity selected for deletion and assign it to a previously selected model entity constant. In the same conditional statement, we will assign the new value of the property to newly selected model entity. Again, we'll add a print statement to log that this condition has been detected. Before setting a model debug options component for our newly selected model entity, we'll clear the model debug options property of previously selected model entity by setting it to nil. Like the first condition, we'll create a model debug options component and assign it to the model debug options property of newly selected model entity. This is what it looks like when we select a model for deletion, but then select another model for deletion. This completes the second condition. For the third and final condition, we want to know when the new value of entity selected for deletion is being set to nil. When the property is set to nil, we'll set the model debug options property of the current entity selected for deletion to nil. This completes our work on the model deletion manager, and we can move on to the next action item. For the second action item, we'll pass a model deletion manager state object into the app environment. 
In the main entry point of our app, we'll create a state object for an instance of Model Deletion Manager. We'll pass the state object into the app's environment using an environment object modifier. Navigate to content view.swift and scroll down to the content view preview struct. We'll also pass in an instance of model deletion manager into the environment of our preview using an environment object modifier. We are now done with this action item. For the third action item, we'll add functionality to use a long press gesture recognizer to select a model for deletion. Navigate to custom AR view.swift. Create a new property for a model deletion manager. We'll need to update our initializer to accept a model deletion manager as a parameter. We'll also assign the model deletion manager passed in by the constructor to the instance property. At the bottom of the initializer, call a function called enable object deletion. This function doesn't yet exist, so Xcode will show us an error. No worries, we'll fix this now. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of the file. Create a new section using a comment and the mark keyword. Create an extension of custom AR view. Inside this extension create a new function called enable object deletion. This function will take no parameters and the return type is void. We'll create a UI long press gesture recognizer for which the action will be a selector to a function called handle long press. We'll complete this function by adding the gesture to the custom AR view. Next, we'll create the handle long press method. Make sure to prepend at objc keyword in front of the func keyword. This is needed to use the selector syntax in our enable object deletion method. Our handle long press method will have one parameter, which will be a UI long press gesture recognizer. Inside this function, we'll get the location of the gesture. This location will be XY coordinates indicating where on the screen the gesture was activated by the user. Once we have the location of the gesture, we'll use the entity method from ARView to return an entity that intersects array originating from the point on the screen. Keep in mind that this method only returns the closest entity to the device. If an entity has been detected, we want to use a conditional type cast to make sure it is a model entity type. If an entity is found, we'll assign it to the entity selected for deletion property of our model deletion manager. Build our project. We notice that there's an error in arViewContainer.swift. Get access to our model deletion manager by using an environment object. Next, we'll use Xcode Autofix to update the constructor call for custom AR view and pass in our instance of model deletion manager. Build the project again. There should be no more errors in our project. For the next action item, we'll create a deletion view with cancel and confirm delete buttons. Right click on placementview.swift and create a new file. We'll use the Swift file template and call it deletion view. Remove the import foundation statement and instead import Swift UI. Before we create our deletion view struct, let's navigate to placementview.swift and copy all the code for the placement button struct. Paste the code in deletionview.swift and rename the struct to deletion button. Above the deletion button struct, create a new struct called deletion view and have it adopt the view protocol. To conform to the view protocol, create a body variable. Xcode will give us some errors, so for now, add an H stack to the body. Inside the deletion view, we'll need access to our scene manager and model deletion manager environment objects. Create a deletion button with system icon name xmark.circle.fill. This button will be the cancel delete button. Inside the button action, we'll add a print statement and set the entity selected for deletion property of model deletion manager to nil. We are essentially clearing the deletion selection. Create a second deletion button with system icon named trash.circle.fill. This button will be the confirm delete button. We'll again add a print statement inside the button action. In addition to the print statement, we want to also write code to delete the selected model from the scene. Using a guard statement, we'll get the anchor from the entity selected for deletion. From this anchor, we'll obtain the anchoring identifier. Each anchor in our scene has a unique anchoring identifier. Any anchor entity created with an anchor also has the same anchoring identifier. We'll use this fact to obtain the index of the anchor entity in anchor entities that corresponds to the anchor with the specified anchoring identifier. Once we have the index, we'll add a print statement and remove the anchor entity from the anchor entities array in scene manager. I would like to note that this remove operation would potentially be a problem for large-scale applications. 
If an anchor entity would be removed from the middle of a large array, all elements to the right of this element would need to shift left. This is not very efficient. Keep that in mind when working on production apps. Once we've removed the anchor entity from the anchor entity's array, we'll remove the anchor from its parent, which will essentially remove the model entity from the scene. We'll also set entity selected for deletion to nil. In order to make our deletion view look good, we'll add a spacer to the left of our cancel button in between the cancel and confirm button and to the right of the confirm button. We'll also add padding to the bottom of the H stack with a value of 30 points. This completes our work on the deletion view. Moving on to the next action item, we'll update the if statement in content view to render replacement view, a deletion view, and a control view based on specified conditions. Navigate to contentview.swift. We'll need access to our model deletion manager environment object. Next, we'll delete the if statement that determines which view to render. No worries, we'll create a new one. Create a new if statement that checks if selected model in placement settings is not nil. If it's not nil, we'll render a placement view. Else if entity selected for deletion in model deletion manager is not nil, we'll render a deletion view. Else we'll render a control view. For the final action item, we'll add functionality to the clear all scene button. Navigate to control view dot swift and scroll to the clear scene button in scene button struct. Inside the action of this control button, we'll use a for loop to iterate through the anchor entities array in scene manager. For every anchor entity, print a message to the console and remove the anchor entity from its parent. This will essentially remove the model from the scene. We are now ready to test the deletion functionality. Let's run the app. We'll place several models in our scene. When we long press on a model in the scene, we see that the model becomes highlighted using the model debug options component. When we cancel deletion, we see that the model returns to its original appearance. When we select it again, it's highlighted again. When we confirm deletion, the model is removed from the scene. Select another model for deletion. However, instead of deleting, we'll select another model in the scene. We can see how the highlighted state is transferred to the other model. Cancel deletion. Go to the scene mode and click on the clear scene button. We can now see that all our models have been removed from the scene. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and until the next time.